Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen, this is part two uh, of the presentation and uh, um, small review regarding um, the um, uh, Kylon Advanced Gateway uh, uh, software, Kylon Media Server Gateway uh, Head-End Software version 3.0. Um, as I promised you in the first part, uh, we're going to touch a couple of uh, important uh, features uh, such as uh, DVB modulators, the usage with the DVB modulators. Inside, it's, uh, inside the test machine, it's a um, TBS6004 DVB-C uh, modulator, four frequencies. Basically, uh, as you can see here, you can uh, assign four MPTS uh, source uh, and configure them. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, CDN pushing and uh, of the couple of uh, streams and uh, content and we're gonna talk about the new project uh, which seems to be a very attractive uh, 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 streaming from uh, Kylon Media Server to one stream, uh, one stream being the latest uh, 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 Comer in the broadcast business, which seems to uh, start on uh, very good premises, and uh, it's going to be, in my opinion, I can foresee, is going to be very popular. So, first things first, uh, DVBC modulator. DVBC modulator already installed. I, as I told you in my previous movies, uh, whatever uh, TBS hardware are you installing in uh, in your machine, if you have a Kylone. Uh, uh, advanced gateway or advanced uh, software, yeah, it's automatically uh, detected. The modulator, the DVB cards, uh, whatever you are using, it's uh, automatically detected and get the drivers installed. So, in order to be able to um, capture, we already show in the first version, uh, first movie, how do you create a transponder or a uh, frequency, how do you scan it and receive it. For uh, broadcast it in a uh, cable network, in the uh, DVB-C network, um, first of all, uh, there are a couple of um, uh, procedure uh, which you have to do them in, into the into the Kylon. Once you are uh, sure that your uh, modulator is here and it's uh, installed and present, you have to choose uh, which frequencies you want to operate. You cannot put some random frequencies. You have to use uh, uh, with a multiplier of 8 megahertz uh, between them, as you can see here. So if you start from 306, yeah, uh, the next one is going to be 314, 322, 330. You can start or also you can set to start from 330 and uh, the upcoming ones is going to be 338 and uh, 346 and so on. So you cannot uh, set individually uh, frequencies. Frequencies must uh, respect the order, one after each other. Okay, uh, once selected uh, and started, uh, the, uh, I mean, once you have this uh, set up, the next step is to create some multiplexes. Multiplexes, you go in the multiplexers and you create a new record. Yeah, uh, when you create a new record, you can call it, I don't know, MOX1. Uh, you can set it active. Uh, you can uh, add here a bitrate, desired bitrate. Please be careful with the desired bitrate because it's very important to match the bandwidth of the uh, modulator so uh, for example if you put it on zero it will match the content which you uh, will uh, put inside the multiplexer okay uh, for this example i'm gonna let it to zero and i'm gonna add um, let's say uh, a couple of uh, channels i'm gonna add for example e1 entertainment and warner tv uh, channels uh, to this uh, specific multiplexer. Okay, you can uh, point here uh, the multiplexer to a specific IP address and specific port to the specific via the specific interface. Uh, since I don't have um, uh, a uh, summator, the, the one which is gathering all the channels from the RF broadcast, 
I'm gonna use the loop uh, interface, loopback interface to set this up. So I'm gonna save with two channels, for example. And uh, here it is, I have the first MUX installed. Once the, uh, the MUX, MUX one, multiplexer one is created. Once created, you just have to go to the modulator, edit, and uh, you're gonna see it here. You can assign the MUX one, for example, to source, uh, to frequency source 306 or whatever you want, which, which one you want. Once is assigned you have to save the record and you have to go and uh, restart media server with comet uh, it will take a while probably a couple of seconds probably more depending on the hardware power of your machine you have so if you have a uh, powerful machine a uh, multi-core sound server or something it's going to be faster as you can see the multiplexer already is here yeah it's uh, present it will show you the bandwidth of the two channels there are two channels added in the multiplexer and here you can see the modulator at work already it's getting the two channels uh, set up and working into the, uh, into the broadcast area meaning that on frequency 306 uh, both of uh, the channels they are uh, broadcasted so pretty much uh, this is it as you can see uh, this part uh, not very hard it's very easy to understand and comprehend it is very intuitive and simple to use okay uh, this was one of the important feature the next important feature which uh, I'm gonna show you it's the presence of the CI cards, uh, meaning that cards like uh, TBS 6590 or uh, even 6900, you can install them in the machine and you can control them right from here. It's quite simple. Uh, once a card is installed, uh, it's automatically detected. Uh, and you can go and activate it. For example, I have one already active. Uh, which has a CI uh, inserted inside so uh, just have to edit set active and if you have a CI inserted uh, you're gonna need to add uh, the specific CI for example in this case I have a uh, soft cam for Conax, a soft cam for Nagra, a soft cam for 378X and also I have the DV, DV DV Blast, DV Blast uh, MPTS uh, system. The DV, B, DV Blast MPTS system, it's actually uh, the bridge which is communicating with the CI. Uh, in my case, for example, I have already a CI set up right here. It's DV Blast MPTS CI. It's quite simple. Just create the MPTS CI. You insert the CI into the card, and uh, if you want to see information, first you have to create the uh, DVB last MPTS uh, protocol right here then you just uh, save commit everything and after the commit if you come uh, in the status you're gonna see the cam it's working it's right here so you have information of the of the card of the CI um, pretty much this is it Regarding the soft cam, uh, some third party partners of, of ours, they uh, made some uh, soft cam uh, uh, possibility of the scrambling. Uh, we know that it's uh, quite uh, a sensitive area because um, a soft cam, uh, it's used in piracy and uh, uh, illegal streaming content. So uh, this presentation, uh, and this uh, movie it's uh, pure uh, technical so uh, we do not recommend such things to use in illegal uh, actions uh, the most important part uh, why we needed and why we uh, asked a community and why community helped us because amongst the operators lately uh, the big operators yeah um, they uh, there are a couple of them that they don't provide i mean they just you are a small operator i'm gonna give you a small case you are a small operator tv operator and you are purchasing licenses and uh, television broadcasting rights uh, from a big distributor and um, 
you got in the licenses, you're getting uh, everything, but the distributor it will tell you, I don't care uh, how do you get them. So you just go and pay for the licensing and uh, the distributor will say, sadly, we don't have a possibility of uh, helping you. You have to do it on your own. It's, it's a well-known problem. Small operators, small uh, 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 television stations know what I'm talking about. So this is when such things as softcam getting handy and uh, good to good to use, and uh, they useful for um, having the softcam module. It's quite simple. Uh, you just need to add it, install it in the external modules area. You install them by uploading them you, you you might find them on various websites it's not provided by us uh, once installed you have to go and create a profile or something uh, here pre-processing and uh, once you created uh, you establish uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, protocol to use uh, cs 378 X or uh, I don't know new candy or something like this you have to specify the uh, system the decryption system and uh, IP port username password and the scrambling key pretty much this is it uh, it's a very sensitive area I don't want to dive too much because uh, uh, I don't want to uh, encourage or uh, let misinterpretation that we are encouraging uh, Piracy or something else. Uh, okay, going forward, this is when you are uh, doing some scrambling uh, with Softcam. If you want to assign the scramble, I already show you. You just need to edit your channel and uh, uh, go edit it and uh, uh, enable CAM utilization. Use or do not use uh, CI. It's quite simple. Once you set up never forget you have to go commit restart media server and uh, automatically the changes are uh, applied to the system and check in status and it will always show you that it is working okay um, the next step um, after the scrambling uh, uh, it's going to be uh, I, I show you how to use the modulator to modulate in RF network in, uh, in DVBC network uh, the next step, uh, I'm going to show you how to transmit to the CDN uh, some uh, specific content, some uh, uh, channels or something. If you have a remote CDN and you, would you like to uh, manage from there. For uh, this purpose, I choose to use the RTMP push. So the RTMP push, uh, it will gonna push uh, to some uh, CDN. For this example, I have choose to use uh, the new bad boy uh, from the town. I mean the the new software, not bad boy. It's called OneStream, the OneStream uh, panel. So uh, what I have did, I have set into the uh, RTMP push profile uh, the line directly. I have. Um, choose one channel for example to broadcast it to um, uh, CDN quite simple I just uh, edit the channel and uh, add CDN of the profile of the CDN once the profile of the CDN added you all you have to do is just press the small green arrow and uh, edit it and uh, you select the uh, RTMP push path you select the container file format, the name for the FLV if you are using FLV, uh, for MPEG-TS if you are using MPEG-TS and the transcoding profile because of course you are going to need a little bit of transcoding. Uh, these um, panels, these um, uh, uh, streaming management panels are uh, able to work with uh, RTMP push. This is one of the source. The second source which I used it's uh, some desktop uh, of mine, uh, and I used to also to RTMP push a stream from a uh, HDMI encoder from a TBS two six zero three AU uh, HDMI encoder. So as you can see, first thing in uh, into the one stream uh, panel, it's uh, you have to go to the security and you have to authorize the. IP which you are using to broadcast 
from source to the destination CDN. Once the IP authorized, you can go in the incoming area and you can see the streams. As I told you, one is coming from a uh, Kylone, the second one is coming from a uh, 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 encoder, from a HDMI encoder. So pretty much this is it. Um, in the third part of the movie, I'm gonna make a little bit uh, more descript desc description of the one stream. It, I will dedicate a uh, special uh, thread for uh, one stream only because I found it very very interesting uh, it has compared to uh, other previous solution or any other products on the market such as um, the old dead uh, extreme codes uh, or um, uh, XUI or I don't know some other um, uh, panels as as they are called i i'm not calling them panels like tv panels i call them uh, cdn uh, uh, content management uh, this one is quite versatile um, it has a couple of functions uh, and uh, as far as i can notice uh, it's quite legal the development is active and uh, uh, many things uh, surrounding this project seems to be uh, very interesting uh, starting from the web UI and for from functions uh, one of the functions they are uh, promising the developers are promising it's the peer-to-peer -peer streaming which is uh, very useful for uh, bandwidth save uh, they also uh, are having some um, extra features uh, so, such as apps and uh, transcoding with GPU with stuff like this but as I said uh, for this I'm gonna allocate a special episode a special part of the um, of uh, the movie on my uh, YouTube channel going back to the um, uh, Kylon uh, as I told you Kylon uh, right now it's supporting also ATSC US uh, uh, or Japanese transmission modulators and it's going to support also ISDBT modulators, which is uh, an exceptional addition for Latin America uh, small uh, operators. Well, pretty much this is it uh, uh, for the second part. Um, uh, we're gonna uh, make a, a revision very soon uh, of the Kylon version 3.0 because there are some upcoming uh, very nice changes. Uh, and uh, we're gonna pack them and present them and uh, show them uh, to to you, to my viewers, uh, for uh, uh, further discussion. Thank you for watching. Please uh, like or dislike my uh, video. Uh, subscribe if you want more information. And uh, see you in uh, part three. Thank you very much.